of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is born. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and world passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. He went to be registered with Mary, his espoused wife, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger 
for there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in that region shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were filled with fear. But the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Many years ago, during what uh, she termed her Annus Horribilis, the Queen, in rather typical English understatement, was heard to have said that this is not a year upon which I will look back with undiluted pleasure. I dare say that we can all say that about this past year. I don't think 2020 will be a year upon which any of us will look back with undiluted pleasure. And here, of course, we come to this Christmas time knowing that on Boxing Day we go into yet another lockdown. This year, the bad news certainly seems to have had the upper hand. Well, that is exactly what it would have seemed like in the days when Jesus came among us that very first Christmas many years ago. His people were occupied by, by the Roman Empire. His parents, Joseph and Mary, had to go a great distance from the, their own village, had to leave home when Mary was just about to, to give birth to her child. They had to go for a census that was against the, the, the faith of the people of Israel, for one thing, to pay a tax that was unjust. As soon as the baby was born, Joseph gets news that the, the local king, Herod, is looking to kill him because he's heard that this is some great king. They have to flee their own country. The bad news seemed to be all around them. But it did not have the upper hand. Because the whole message of Christmas is that the good news comes to be among us. The good news, the, the church, uh, church term we use for that is gospel. Gospel means good news. And what is, or rather, who is the good news but Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is this light of which Isaiah speaks that shines on those who dwell in the darkness and the shadow of death. Jesus Christ is the light of whom St. John speaks when he says that the light shone in the darkness and the darkness would not overcome it. Yes, Many of us have been hounded by bad news, whether it be the bad news of the virus, the bad news of politics, the bad news of economics, the bad news of, of jobs, the bad news of perhaps having to spend Christmas by ourselves. But into the bad news comes this Christmas as every Christmas. Good news that cannot be beaten, good news that triumphs over all of the bad, 
the good news that assures us that we are truly never alone. Because the one who says, I am with you always, comes to be with us in a very special way in this beautiful season of Christmas. Dear friends, the great gift of God that lay wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger 2,000 years ago comes to us right now under the Eucharistic forms of bread and wine. That good news, Jesus Christ, is among us now. That good news over which all of the bad news that can be arranged against us cannot be triumphant. Our gospel proclaims glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Tonight we join with the choirs of angels in singing that great glory to God in thanksgiving for the good news of Jesus Christ who is among us now. May God bless you all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the joy of this Christmas Eve, let us bring all of our needs to God our Father with faith and confidence. For the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that as she celebrates the Nativity of our Lord, she may grow in holiness and fidelity to the Gospel. Christ, hear us. Christ, Christ graciously, graciously hear us. For all those who do not yet believe in Christ, or who have strayed away from him, that they may know that today a Savior is born for them. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For the persecuted brothers and sister Christians, especially in the Middle East, that the Lord will give them comfort, courage, and peace. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For, the, for peace in the world, that nations, communities, and families may resolve their conflicts by giving themselves over to Christ, the Prince of Peace. Christ, hear us. Christ, Christ graciously Christ. hear us. For those who are alone or abandoned, for the oppressed, the hungry, and the homeless, that the birth of Christ may give them hope. 
Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For all who are struggling with this pandemic, that Almighty God will bless those who are working to ensure the health and welfare of all people, that he will see us safely through this time of crisis to a brighter future. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For all the sick of our families and in our parish, that they may join their suffering to the sufferings of Christ for the salvation of the world. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For those who have died, especially our loved ones and parishioners who have died over the past year, that by the power of the Christ's birth on earth, they may be born anew in the kingdom of heaven. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Let us seek the intercession of our Blessed Lady who brought the good news into the world. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and your name for the praise of the glory of his name, for our good and the good of his Lord Holy Church. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly. For knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the So that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, Wayne, our Bishop-elect, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. 
Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Posagonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith 
and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory of us, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ. Amen.
draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. People of God, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. On behalf of Bishop Eustrichi, Father Bill Foote, Luis Inacio, our seminarian, all of our parish team, I would like to wish all of you and your loved ones a very, very happy and holy Christmas. God bless you all.